Welcome back to Weekend with Betty. We're glad you're back. And remember, this show isn't complete without what you have to say on the streets of social media. So let's get right into it and take a look at what you've been saying on hashtag Weekend with Betty. That's where you're going to find us at K24 TV at Shiksha Aurora. And taking a look at some of your tweets, I've got at Weru who says hashtag Weekend with Betty. Watching live from Nyeri, hashtag Weekend with Betty. So you can proudly say, Akonyeri. Moving on, we've got Chris Ray who says, it is important to understand the stages of sexual development your child is likely to go through at different ages and what you can do to help them adjust to the changes that they will experience. Now, of course, this is with regard to the topic that we are going to be talking about on what's the deal uh, right after this. So we'll get into details and, of course, we'll be elaborating further on what our panel has to say as well. Wilfred says, a very important topic. We need to have the little ones learn from us or some Someone else will teach them wrong things. Uh, moving on, we've got Hustler who says, my mze was another one. When I was 13, he told me, if you have sex, you will die. Honestly, I wish I had believed him. No comments. <laughs> Samuel Karanja says, tell them as it is, no shortcuts, no sugar coating, no nothing but the truth. And that right there is what I'd like to begin the conversation with. It is very important to say it how it is. And of course, no need to sugarcoat, especially when you're living in a society like the one that we exist in today. It is so important to educate, to inform, and to make sure that your children, uh, your siblings are also aware on their whereabouts. And of course, about their bodies as well. And hello. Hey. Hello. You look Welcome. so nice. Thank you. And so do you. That's Mike. And that's Valentine. Oh, I thought you had forgotten my name <laughs> for a second, right? Yeah, you haven't been here, so like, you know. <laughs> that's the deal. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. Hi, I'm Valentine Jerome. <laughs> and I'm back. <laughs> and I'm back, yes. Right, so you know, Valentine, this I think is a very important topic. And we've had this discussion. For me especially. Before. Exactly, because you've got a child. And, you know, as a mother, what do you think and when do you think is the most appropriate time to speak to your child about sex education? Well, I'm actually a sex educator. Okay. And I have an entire course for how to talk to your child from really? 0 to 21 about, it's called Kids and Bodies. Okay. And it's available zd.com. Yeah. So um, the first part is from 0 to 5, where I first mentioned it at my son's kindergarten mm -hmm. and parents and especially fathers were like, Ati what? Sex? Kids? We're in kindergarten. What do you mean? Yeah. All yeah. this stuff. And um, I'm loving the men's comments mm. on Twitter that they're a big fan of this. Mm -hmm. Moms, where are you? What do you think? Um, I think you start exactly as the, was it, was it Chris who said, you know, your child goes through different stages of exactly. development? So zero to five, your kid is excited about their body. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like, wah, I what told is you this? that something <laughs> shakes. And, you know, my sister or my cousin doesn't have what I have or whatever. At least this is what has happened in my house. Mm -hmm. I think you just answer your child's questions and you tell them, you answer them where they are. Yes. So like my son knows he has a penis right. and girls have a vulva. Vulva? Yes, Interesting. It's, it's not a vagina. Vagina okay. is internal and mm -hmm. you can't actually see it. Mm -hmm. What you see on the outside is a vulva. Now, Mike, of course, we live in uh, Kenya. This is Africa. Yes. And at the end of the day, um, there is something that we really think that, mm. you know, some things you just cannot talk, yeah. especially with your parents. Yeah. Your parents will never speak to you, especially back in the day. Yeah. Do you think it's still a taboo to talk about sex education at home? I, th I think the fact that, you know, we, we started it that way, mm. that um, I, for example, nobody talked to me about that. You nothing. Know, what, nothing. One day someone just turned up in school with a magazine and was like, wait, guys, come here, i show you something. <laughs> and we all huddled together at break time. And, and everyone's like, hush, 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 flipped which, pages. Which and like, school and the same was... school that you were in. <laughs> you, you were not invited, that's why. Because <laughs> we were in the same primary <laughs> school, 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 Never looked at women the same again. Right. But you see, that's the thing. This was Consolata Primary for Don't, like, throw names I, I out was, there. I was in the same school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Oh, wow, reunion. Yes, okay. reunion. Yeah, so clearly we had different friends if you guys were not in that group. Oh, so, uh -huh. yeah, but, <laughs> but, but the thing is that um, nobody talked to us about it, mm -hmm. you know. And I think for, par for people growing up, we don't have the tools to be able to speak to other young people about sex education, mm -hmm. because to us, sex education is just sex. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's oh, you mean like intercourse? It's intercourse, yeah, that's it. So there's a whole realm of information around that. You know, it's not just that, it's about bodily autonomy, it's about consent, it's about 
uh, you know, sexuality, it's about reproductive health. There's so much to talk about. But in our minds, we've just been, when, whenever you hear sex education, and I think the church is, has something to do with yeah, it. Because right. every time you hear sex education, there's some bishop or the other saying something about, no, if you talk to kids about sex education, we'll have a, you know, everyone will just go out and be a prostitute and everyone will just go out and As be a gigolo. As if sex needs and an yeah. advertising mm. campaign, yeah. right? Sex sells itself. You don't yeah. need to advertise it. You don't mm. need to and tell people, go ahead yeah. and have it. Even if you said, don't have it. Pe human beings, it's like food. It's okay. They will eat. Yeah. <laughs> they will eat. So, so, yeah. I, so I said this right. last week when I was here that, you know, parents, teachers go into a class mm -hmm. with a teaching plan. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you don't just walk into a class and be like, hey, 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 I'm here. You know, you have a teaching plan. Yeah. So you have a marketing plan. You have a strategic plan. Do you have a parenting plan? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And How it's interesting to to your child? that you've actually brought that up because, yeah. you know, since you're the boy child here mm -hmm. amongst the two of yeah. us, maybe you should tell us as a man, mm -hmm. do you think it's harder for a father to open up to the son or the daughter, as a matter of fact, as compared to the mother? I think it's about the relationship you build with your child. Okay. How you create that space and the environment in your home. Most of us were raised, when your dad appeared in the house, you disappeared yeah. somewhere under the bed somewhere. So can you imagine having, you know, to be in that space where you're going to ask your dad, okay, dad, you know, last night I had a, something happened in the bed. Mm. And first of all, you'll be caned. Yes. Then you'll be you sent whipped. to approved <laughs> school or to shag somewhere, you know. I so we never created the environment yeah. where that conversation could happen. But also, I don't think our parents had the tools or wherewithal to be able to understand age appropriate information. Mm -hmm. I also, okay, so this is actually why I created the course. It's just, it's to handhold parents in having that age appropriate conversation so mm -hmm. that at different points you're, dis you're decimating different information. Right. And then you're also asking your child different questions. You know, mm -hmm. if they go for a sleepover, don't say, oh, did you have fun? Mm -hmm. But ask, you know, like, what was the high? What was the low? Um, is there at any point, did you feel yucky or did you want to leave? Were you uncomfortable? Did you feel shy? Did somebody touch you and you felt shy? Mm -hmm. You know, those the, so you ask your child those kind of questions and then you have a conversation like under what circumstances, what are your friends doing, are they playing show me yours, I show you mine, mm -hmm. mama na baba and all these you know games, childhood games really. Mm -hmm. So it's to equip parents to have that conversation. For me it's not whether or not you should have the sex conversation as a, as a parent, right. it's at what point and what information are you giving out. Because there are things we don't call sex education but they are. I remember my dad telling me things like you know, a boy will have sex with you and not like you. Mm -hmm. I was like, yo, dad, what? How Me? can you say that? <laughs> no, but meanwhile, yeah. like, when I was really, when I was young, yeah. and, you know, some of my friends were starting to have sex. I think I had sex later than some of my friends. I think I was like 19. Um, but at that point, I thought, you know, it's like a done deal. If I have sex with you, then we're together for life. Like, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. So for him to say that to me was groundbreaking. Mm -hmm. So some of the things parents can pass on yeah. are like values. Like, don't assume everybody's on the same page mm -hmm. as you have these conversations. And it's also not one conversation. You're not going to sit down your 12-year-old and say, your period will come. Here's a pad. Boom, boom, boom. We're done for life. Mm -hmm. Like, there's sex education even when people are 27, yeah. you know, so you keep... It continues. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. So I like, I like what yeah. you're saying about you build this relationship. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and I think the, the one thing a lot of parents think is that when it comes to that time where you have to have that conversation about the birds and the bees, it'll be just one conversation. Yeah, right. and that's like, it. Yo, mm. it's like this, and then like that. And Take a shot of tequila, <laughs> get through it. <laughs> yeah. Let's never talk about this again, no, right? It's education, so it's, it's a lifelong thing. I mean... Even now, I'm still discovering stuff. But let me ask yeah. you, because your son is eight, yeah. and I think at that point, he should mm -hmm. know what intercourse is. Mm -hmm. Does he? No, he, he doesn't. I haven't had that conversation with him Has yet. Has he asked you? He, no, he hasn't asked me yet. But we're still having the conversations about, you know, things that are happening with his body. You okay. Know? Yeah. Ah, so, okay. And, and, and that's why for me, age-appropriate information is necessary. But in this day and age, yeah. where they go on the internet and mm -hmm. see people kissing and see all those things happening. Yeah, and, and Kenyans yeah. want some obscure Pornhub something. Like, aren't we number one in the world looking at Pornhub? Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Valentine, you know, uh -huh. like, since you, you brought that up, I mean, you said something very interesting about the changes that um, go th like a child goes through mm -hmm. in terms of the body. And I remember, you know, the one thing that my mom told me when I was younger is when someone touches you here or down, mm. you tell me okay. or you scream. Right, and what exactly would did you tell um, you know your son 
so that other parents can also learn from it. So I haven't focused so much on that. It's called the bikini touch. Like if someone touches okay. you in your bikini area, yeah. then that's a hell no. And you should either scream or tell mom or dad or the, or the teacher. Mm -hmm. But the issue is that when with predators, they groom the child. So it, they might start off like rubbing the child's back. Right. So by the time they get to the bikini area, the child is like, now I'm confused. So this is a no, but I felt shy already. I felt, felt uncomfortable. So what I'm teaching my child is if you're uncomfortable, if somehow you feel yucky and you use a child's language, if you feel yuck, if you feel shy, if you feel a bit embarrassed, like mm -mm, I'm not happy with this, then you tell me. And I said, yeah. and then you have permission to hit people. Okay. Like you can scream, hit the person and run. I think and then we yeah. role play. I'm like, yeah. you do what? Yes, yeah. So I'm like, you can hit mommy. He's like, I can hit mom. So I'm like, you can hit me. And then he'll run. So we, we've practiced the response. It's too much to ask a child in a moment of panic mm -hmm. to come up with a plan. Right. Or to know what to do. So you role play with them. You set them up for success. They might fail and tell you later. But it's OK. They should be armored. You, you know, sometimes someone makes a snide comment mm -hmm. three hours later. You're like, I should have said. Right? So it's right. better if you have yeah. the comment or the yeah. reaction inbuilt. Okay. So teach your child the yes. All right. For now, let's just take a short break. But okay. We'll be right back. And of course, we'll keep talking about this. And in fact, you can also interact with us. Remember, the hashtag is Weekend with Betty. Talk to us. Do you agree with what Valentine has said? Do you think uh, that Mike, being the boy child here, is right to say what he's just said? And of course, we'll definitely be interacting with you later on as well. We'll be right back.